You are listening to the Pimp Your Brilliance podcast, and this is episode number 37. This episode is brought to you by the Visionary Journal. The Visionary Journal is a day planner with vision, encompassing everything you need to successfully achieve your goals. It seamlessly blends goal setting, visualization, planning your day-to-day, and regular review to help you get from idea to done. Learn more about the Visionary Journal by visiting visionaryjournal.co. Welcome to the Pimp Your Brilliance podcast with Monique Malcolm, a show about creative people leveraging their brilliance to create their own opportunities. I aim to show you what's really possible when you shut down the chorus of fear and lean into your genius zone. You can learn more about this show and subscribe for updates by visiting keepchasingthestars.com backslash podcast. Hey, Star Chasers. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Pimp Your Brilliance. But if this is your first time listening, welcome. It's great to have you. I'm your host, Monique Malcolm, and the Pimp Your Brilliance podcast is a show for creatives who want to leverage their brilliant ideas, quirky obsessions, and talents to create their own opportunities. Every week, I bring you inspiring interviews with amazing creative entrepreneurs, or I hop on the mic solo to share bits of my own journey and actionable strategies for you to try out for yourself. This week, it's just me. So you're getting me all up in your ear gates. And today's episode is inspired by a conversation I've had with my mom and a really good friend of mine. And it's about passion, specifically about finding your passion or finding your purpose. Because what I am finding in conversations with people is that a lot of people feel like they don't know what they're passionate about. They don't know what their purpose is and they feel like they're floating through life. And then there's also like this idea or feeling that There are others of us like myself who just know, like we just woke up one day and we were like, I know what my passion is and I'm going to do it and everything's going to be great. And that's just not the case at all. So I want to talk about this. I want to break it down why I feel like it's difficult for people to figure out what they're passionate about. Some tiny actions that I took on my journey to figuring out what I was really passionate about and what I felt like my purpose is, and then four steps to help you figure out or find your own passion. If you're a person that's in this boat of, I don't know. So I want to start out with this quote, and I said it, and it is, every big thing in life is done through a series of tiny actions. And I'm going to, you're going to be hearing me talk a lot about tiny actions because like I just said, everything is done through tiny actions. If you think about it, what in your life that's been significant or meaningful or that's been a huge accomplishment Did you just do all at once in one big fell swoop? Probably nothing. Everything is done through a series of tiny actions. If you think about, let's say, a sport. So I I played basketball and volleyball for a little bit when I was a child. And if you've ever played a sport, you watch sport games on TV. You see them playing the game. But that's not actually how you learn how to play a sport. If you're playing basketball, you learn how to play basketball one piece at a time. So maybe you learn how to dribble and you do some dribbling drills, or maybe you learn shooting form and then you practice shooting. And then even with shooting, there's all kinds of, you know, there's free throws and there's doing layups. And these are all small parts of the overall game. And you practice these things and you add them together. And over time, if you practice and you keep building up, you figure out how to play the whole game. But you don't just start out playing the whole game. And I hope that that sports metaphor makes sense. But that that's just how things work. Everything is a series of tiny actions with goals. When I talk to people about setting goals, there's this whole idea of how do you eat an elephant? And if you think about it, if you had to eat an elephant in one whole sitting, that would be overwhelming. You'd never be able to do it. But the answer to that question of how you eat an elephant is one small bite at a time. So again, tiny actions, tiny bites. And I always tell people baby steps, taking baby steps, because eventually I say baby steps lead into adult steps. And it's just that whole idea of doing enough small steps that eventually snowball into bigger things. And finding your passion is really similar to that. And I'm going to break that down. So here are some thoughts about why I think finding your passion is so difficult. I personally don't feel that we do a great job with encouraging people 
to explore to explore their interests, especially as children. I feel like there's a few things that we encourage, like sports. A lot of parents encourage kids who show academic prowess at a young age or like to read, maybe music, um, things like that. But I don't, there aren't that many programs and I don't feel like a lot of parents really push kids to say, oh, you know, you like animals. Maybe you're going to do horseback riding. Maybe if you have money, <laughs> that's a, a thing. Or maybe you really, really like drawing and so your parents send you to art camp. But a lot of these other types of activities, usually, you know, economics come into play. There's not money for that or people don't have time. Or your parents, they want to be helpful and they want to push you towards being successful, but they overlook these little passions or these little interests that you have as a young age. And so you go through life and you become an adult and you haven't taken time to explore those things. And then once you become an adult, what happens? We are just in this place of adulting, working, paying bills, taking care of families, traveling, I don't know, doing whatever, just adult things. And a lot of times, again, we're in this place of we're not exploring interests. We are just doing adult things and going going about our day-to-day lives and, again, not exploring interests or things that could develop into a passion or could develop into a real hobby. So I just personally know in this conversation, I said it was inspired by my, by my mom. She feels like all this time, like she doesn't have any hobbies and she doesn't have like any real interest. And that's because she spent her life not being pushed or encouraged to explore any interest. She had me at the age of 20 and then I'm, I'm the older or before my parents divorced, there were four kids. And between me and my youngest brother from that marriage, uh, there's a five-year gap. So within five years of getting married, my mom had four kids. And there's not a whole lot of time to pursue your interests when you're in your 20s with four kids and a husband. So again, a lot of her life was just spent doing adult things, raising a family. And this is not an uncommon scenario a lot of people are in this situation and they just feel like they get to a point and they look around and it feels like, okay, is this it? Like, do I just get up and go to work every day and come home and watch TV? So that's the biggest thing. I just don't feel like we've done a great job of encouraging people to pursue their interests, even small ones, even things that they have, like, maybe I'm curious about how this will be. We're not pushing people to go out there and do that. And that leaves this huge void. And then when you stumble into someone like me who feel, you start to feel like, oh, she's got it all together. She's doing podcasts and she's speaking, she's traveling, she's running this business and she just has it all together. And that is so far from the case. Um, And I'll talk about that a little bit later. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So here's something that I like to ask people, if you had a free day and you couldn't spend it eating or drinking, watching TV, sleeping, or buying things, how would you spend that time? And it's sad to me that a lot of people don't have an answer for that. And it's because usually we don't have a free day or what I have found is as adults, we've developed a lot of unproductive habits. Like I said, going out to eat and drinking watching t- TV, the whole idea of binge watching Netflix, sleeping because we're all chronically sleep deprived. So we're exhausted or just shopping to fill that void because we don't know what to do with time that is available and was not accounted for. So we don't actually have productive habits, but here's the thing about finding your passion that I feel like is often overlooked and that people don't consider. And it's the fact that You're not going to find passion sitting in a book, scrolling the internet. You cannot think your way into finding your passion. It does not work like that. Finding your passion is not a passive activity. To fan the flames of passion, you have to be engaged in some type of activity. You have to be doing things. And one of my personal beliefs is that 
your passion is attached to being of service to others. Now, you may disagree. You may just think, you know, um, finding your passion, you know, you do these activities and you don't feel like you need to be in service of other to others. But I do. I do feel like your passion and your purpose is tied to being of service to other people. Because as humans, we are not designed to be alone. We are not designed to build things alone. We are designed to be connected to other people. We are designed to help each other build these bridges and and journey together. So I really feel like finding your passion is an active activity that involves being in service to other people. So to find your passion, you really have to take action and you have to feel your way through it. And what I mean by that is, say, for example, you've always been curious about what it's like to go camping. Great. So the tiny action that you would take would be to, or the first tiny action, maybe you're going to call up a friend who has always loved outdoors and is a camping pro. Because of course you want to go with somebody who's experienced and knows what they're doing. The tiny action is connecting with that person and then asking them to take you out camping. And then you go. That's your next tiny action. You go. You you pack your stuff. You get the supply list for camping. You get all your supplies and you go on this camping trip. When I say feel your way through it, while you're camping, you are really thinking or sitting with yourself, being present in that moment and asking yourself, like, how does this feel? How do you feel in your body at that moment? How are you feeling about this experience? Is it exciting? Are you happy to be camping or are you miserable? And here's the thing. You might not land on an activity that you love the first time you do it. Maybe you got out there and you thought camping was going to be amazing. And now that you're out there camping, you realize this shit sucks and it's hot and there's mosquitoes and sleeping in a sleeping bag is uncomfortable and you need to shower every night. So this is not working for you. That's okay. It's perfectly fine. The whole point is that you did something and you sat with yourself and you were present and you were aware of how you felt in that moment. And if it didn't feel good, then you scratch that off your list and you know that's not going to be an activity for you. This is not going to be something you want to explore further and you don't do it again. On the flip side of that, what if you were out there and you just realized, man, All my life, I didn't feel like I was an outdoorsy person and now I'm out here camping and this is the best thing ever. You just can't get enough of it. If you feel really good, that is a good indicator for you that maybe you're on to something and then you continue forward. So maybe you did this camping trip. Maybe next you're going to do it again. And maybe next time you're going to, I don't know, go to a new camping spot or invite someone else or figure out some situation that will challenge you to use your outdoorsman skills a little bit more. But the thing is you keep on doing things along that vein. So if you, you start to figure out what was it about camping that you really enjoyed? Was it having to survive for the night, you know, pared down without all of the creature comforts that you have at home? You start asking yourself questions, but the biggest thing is you keep going forward. You keep taking those tiny actions and you keep moving forward and you keep doing it because eventually at some point you will figure out the connection. What is it in that activity that feels so good for you? What is it about that situation that just makes you feel like, man, I feel so alive. That is how you begin to find your passion. But until you do something, until you take action, you're not going to find it. Trust me when I tell you that it's not on Twitter. I don't care. You can scroll Twitter all day, all night, every day. You can flip through and double tap on every single picture on Instagram. You can read everybody's blogs. You can watch everyone's YouTube videos. You can listen to all the advice you want about finding your passion and all the tips, but you're not going to find it unless you're doing something. It's just not going to happen for you. Trust me when I say that. And I don't say that to be negative. I, I want, always want to encourage people to go out and do things, but you're just not going to find it sitting at home. It's just not there. And 
I will tell you, the longer that you sit at home stewing over this, the more unhappy and the more unfulfilled that you will feel because you are, you feel that, that longing and you feel that void and that hole and it's not being filled. And that is because you're not doing anything. And, um, this is a lot. I know a lot of people who are in this situation and it's, it's really frustrating to me because I just like do something, anything. I don't care what it is. Like go outside, go to the park, go to an animal shelter, mentor at a a school, like just pick something and don't feel so attached to, I have to pick the perfect right thing. It doesn't matter. You'll know. You'll know if you do something, like I said, it doesn't feel good, you know, but you have to do something. You have to continue trying things. So I want to talk about a few of the tiny actions that I took that led me to this place. Because as I mentioned earlier, this idea that there's some of us who have it figured out and we just landed there, like we woke up one day and it was, this was it. And we were chasing these passions and pursuing these passions and and on this journey and feeling so happy and alive. That's not the case. That's not the case at all. A bit of my story, if you've never heard of it, is I started out as a crafter with a t-shirt line called Anti-Sparkle. And I started that after I left teaching. I was just really unhappy as a teacher. And uh, the spring break before I left, we were in the craft store because I've always been, now this is one thing, I've always been a person that that loves making things. I've always been crafty. I always love going to the craft store and spending my my money on craft supplies and making things. That's always just made me happy. And I was always painting t-shirts. When I was younger, my mother used to puff make t-shirt like little t-shirts and socks with puff paint and cute bows and she would sell them at the flea market on Saturday morning. So we would have to get up at like 6 a.m. in the morning and go with her to the flea market. And so ever since I used to see my mom making those t-shirts at, for the flea market, I was always painting things for puff, with puff paint, whether it was like homecoming or proms at school for spirit week. I just, there was always a t-shirt that I was making. So this particular spring break, we're in the craft store buying something and there's a screen printing machine, a t-shirt making machine. And my husband says, you should buy that. And I remember looking at him and being like, nah. That's dumb. Why would I do that? And he was like, you can make your own shirts. And I just thought that was crazy. Like, why Why would you think I would want to do that? But we left. But he planted the seed in my mind. Like, you could make t-shirts. And I went back a few days later and I bought that screen printing machine. They don't even make it anymore. But I think at the time it was like two or $300. I can't remember. But I bought that screen printing machine And I thought, okay, I'm going to make t-shirts. And not only am I going to make t-shirts, I'm going to sell these t-shirts. But another really important part of my story is I don't have any formal graphic design knowledge. I'm self-taught. I'm a self-taught graphic designer. So at the time, I didn't know anything about design programs. I didn't even know what you use to design a t-shirt. And I had never screen printed a t-shirt. Until I saw the screen printing machine, I didn't even know that's how t-shirts were made, like the ones that you buy in the stores. But the seed had been planted, and that first tiny action was I bought that screen printing machine. And then I started looking on Google and YouTube and learning everything I could about screen printing, and then learning everything I could about how you design for t-shirts. What do you use? And at the time, I only knew how to use, I started teaching myself Photoshop, which is not what you use to design a a t-shirt, by the way. (laughs) You should use something like Adobe Illustrator, but I didn't know how to use that. I had Photoshop, and so I started teaching myself Photoshop. And again, another tiny action, just making the decision and saying, I'm going to Google around and look for tutorials on how to design, and I'm going to spend some time practicing design and figure it out. And I taught myself basic design. I started my t-shirt business, Anti-Sparkle Apparel. I taught myself more advanced design over the years. So I went from designing t-shirts and sweatshirts to designing all types of jewelry, 
I was designing custom packaging and promotional materials for my brand. So keychains and stickers and postcards, pretty much anything that you could design that you need for a business. I was designing those things for my business with no formal knowledge. Like I was Frankensteining these things together, but I felt very passionate about that work. I felt very passionate about design. So much so that I eventually taught myself more advanced design. So at this point, I can use the majority of the Adobe suite. I know how to use Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, um, Adobe Audition, which is their editing software. So this past year that I've been doing podcasting until I hired the podcast editor, I've been editing on Adobe Audition. I taught myself how to use that. I can use Adobe After Effects a little bit, (laughs) not much, but I can use it just a little bit to get a few things done. But that love for design that I taught myself more advanced design. And that's what led me to be able to create the Visionary Journal and start an entirely new business that is very product focused and, you know, create an entire planner, which again, no formal skill, just a lot of Googling and tutorials to figure out how to do all of that. So, you know, this belief that I just knew what I was going to do and I got started on that, that's not the case. It evolved over time. In the beginning, I was really passionate about this t-shirt line and it was everything. But over time, I realized I have other interests and I wanted to stretch myself and challenge myself and do other things. And so I started the planner company and I started speaking. Don't be so locked into the idea that once you find something you're passionate about, that's the end all be all. Like you're going to be there. It's going to change over time. You're going to find out more about what you like, you're going to figure out more of what you are here to do. And that's one thing that I can say has happened. Sometimes people look at my business and they're like, man, like you started out with this one thing and you've pivoted and reinvented yourself and, you know, changed your business. But I don't see it as a reinventation. I see it as every year I figure out more and more the work that best suits me. And I try to lean into that. I try to get closer to that. And sometimes that requires big changes and you have to be open to that. And it's the same thing with finding your passion. Maybe you started out and you realized you liked camping and you thought that camping was going to be the end all be all. But maybe over time that evolved and you realized like you want to camp, but also you want to involve young people and share your love of the outdoors with them. And that's kind of what's happening in my own life is I love design. And that's something that's coming out more and more for me, especially this year. I realized that uh, design and branding are things that I, I really, really enjoy being in that space. And I'm still trying to figure out how does this fit in my business and in the grand scheme of things, like how the way that I work. I don't have a definitive answer for that yet. I have some ideas that I want to test out, but I don't know yet. But the one thing that's connected with my my passion, what I feel like I've learned over time is that I want to help people. I want to be connected to people. I want to teach people the things that I have learned. I want to shorten the learning curve for other creatives and let them see that like, these things can happen. This is sustainable. You can live and it can be fine. And it can be everything that you hoped and dreamed for. And it can be more than that. It can be things that you didn't even think were possible. But the biggest thing is that I want to be connected with people and I want to help them on their own creative journeys, which is why I do things like this podcast. So, you know, that's that's a little bit of my story. But as I said, looking back on it, I just see the threads of the tiny actions, just making small decisions or sending emails. One of my, I feel like biggest moments for my brand is uh, Issa Rae, who is super famous now and she's got insecure and she's everywhere and everybody knows her name and she's doing all these wonderful things. Before she got to this level, she started out with her YouTube series, Awkward Black Girl. And if you know about my brand, Anti-Sparkle, and you look back through 
the first two seasons, or I think it's only two seasons of Awkward Black Girl, there's a lot of anti-sparkle t-shirt designs that Issa's character, Jay, wears and that her best friend, Cece, wears throughout the series. And they're all t-shirts that I sent her. And people who know about that are like, how did you make that happen? With a tiny action, I sent an email. And that was that. Was that. I sent an email and I said, hey, you guys have this the show. I know you have wardrobe needs. I have a t-shirt company. Tell me your sizes. Tell me what you want and I'll send it to you. And I did that several times. And she would follow up and she would ask for things and she would email and be like, you know, it's going to be in this episode. And it was a really, really great experience. But again, a tiny action. So as I said, with finding your passion, it's all about just these tiny actions, which leads me to four steps to finding your passion. As I said, it's not on the internet waiting, you know, unless you're doing active activities on the, on the internet. So I would say if you're Googling and trying to learn something, being curious about how something is done, how something's made, go for it. But if you're just scrolling mindlessly and thinking that you're just going to see something and it's going to trigger it, that's not it. That ain't it at all. (laughs) So the four steps to finding your passion. My first one is quit thinking and start doing. So you're not going to think your way into your passion. It's just not going to happen. You have to try some things. And specifically, you have to try some things outside of your comfort zone. Get out of your house. Please get out of your dang house. Go walk, go to a park, go to a beach, go to a game, go to a coffee shop, go to a concert, like do something, whatever it is. Make yourself a list. Make yourself a list of five things that you've always thought you wanted to do or that you think you would want to try and go try them one by one. And be present, be present in that moment and really sit with it and and enjoy the experience. Be there fully, put your phone away. Step two, be open-minded and curious. So when you get that five, that list of five things that you've always thought that you wanted to do or challenge yourself and write down a list of five things that maybe you've been curious about, but you feel like wouldn't be for you. So for me, um, I mentioned the camping thing earlier because I thought that I would not enjoy camping because I've never considered myself to be an outdoorsy person. I live in Florida. It's hot as heck all the time. It's just hot. It's always hot. It's never not hot. It's hot. (laughs) And um, Florida, I am afraid of snakes. And Florida has just a lot of snakery. When I tell you we got snakes, The snakery in Florida is just obscene and a lot of them are poisonous. So to do something like camping, that just triggers a lot of things. It's hot. There there could be snakes and, you know, it's mosquitoes, a lot of things. But I went camping a couple years ago with some friends because I was curious. I've I've never been camping and who knows, you know, I, I just wanted to try it. At least I could say I crossed camping off my bucket list. So I was curious and I was open-minded about the experience and I realized I actually love it. I'm I'm not a person that's going to be like a hardcore, I got, I'm going to fit my tent and a week's worth of supplies and a, a backpack and, and live on the land for a week. That's not me, <laughs> but I could do a night or two in a tent with a, a campfire and some marshmallows, you know, some, some basic cre- creature comforts and be fine. And the snakery in Florida for the most part, has not been an issue. And I am paranoid about that. Always looking on the ground to make sure I don't see any snakes. But my point is, I did it. And I was open-minded about it. I just wanted to try it and see how I was going to feel. And the biggest thing is I was curious, like the curiosity of what is it like to go hike out into the woods with a tent and sleep there overnight? Like, what was that like? So be open-minded and curious. Your curiosity will take you far. And if there are things and experiences that you're really curious about, make time to to explore those and just see because you just never know. And I I still don't feel like I'm a super, super outdoorsy person, but I do realize that I enjoy being in nature and I, I don't mind it. So give it a try. Number three, take note of how you feel. And this is a big one. 
right now, I feel like a lot of us are so caught up with things like the social media and having to document everything and being on our phones and we're always staring at our screens. But put your phone away. Put your flipping phone away (laughs) and turn off the social media. Everything doesn't have to be documented. Be present and, and really take note of how you feel when you're doing these activities. If you want to figure out what your passion is, you have to be involved. You you have to dig in. So really sit and think about how does this feel? Like how how are you experiencing this? Do you feel joy? Is there a moment when you're doing specific things and you just feel so lit up inside and so happy like that you could just smile? You know, if if you feel like that that means something, take note of that. And on the flip side, if it just sucks, it sucks. Okay. Take note of that and just know you won't do that anymore. And it's fine too. And then finally, the last thing, let your passions evolve. So don't be so caught up on, I like the outdoors and now camping is like the end all be all. I'm only going to camp. It could be a lot more than that. Explore it. Do it often. Continue pushing yourself, challenge yourself, continue taking those little tiny actions whatever they are. If it's camping, maybe you're going to learn how to pitch a tent in the dark, or maybe you're going to camp in a more rural camp area. I don't know. I'm not that, that far into camping. I'm, I'm just like cute, casual camping, <laughs> but um, uh, let's just say you wanted to volunteer at a school and you volunteered at a school and it was nice. And, and maybe the next tiny action is figuring out how you can mentor a couple kids at that school. And the next step from that is, okay, that went well. How can you uh, do this on a bigger scale? Can you put together some type of volunteer program and, and recruit other mentors for these kids? Like, how can you expand on that? Let it evolve and, and let it see where it takes you. And that is, those are my four steps. So quit thinking and start doing is number one. Number two, be open-minded and curious. Number three, Note how you feel in the moment. And four, let your passions evolve. But more importantly, the biggest thing is do something. Don't just sit there and let time pass you by. You're just going to let the unfulfillment grow. And another thing that I didn't talk about, but I want to point out, just because you're passionate about something doesn't mean you have to turn it into a business. It doesn't mean you have to monetize it. Maybe it's just a hobby and it's just a thing that fills you up and makes you feel like the best version of yourself. That is enough and that is okay too. Not every hobby or every passion has to be monetized. That's not how this has to go at all. It's fine just if you are happy in other areas of your life to just have this as a thing that refills your cup because we all need that. So get out there. Let me know how this goes. But that's the end of today's episode. Until next week, go out there and pimp your brilliance. Uh